Hi everyone, it's Lawrence here, and now I'll be showing you how to teach young students how to play a musical piece. So, come over. We've got a very classic piece. We've got Innocence by Bergmüller. Now, Bergmüller is an early Romantic composer. Some people would refer him to late classical, up to you. So when you play this, you want good technique. And when you teach a student, we always emphasize the idea of counting out loud. Put the numbers in for your student. And before you even start, encourage them to count out loud to you. One and two and three and one and two and three and, and so forth. Continuously. Ask them when they practice, do separate hands. So what I usually do is I mark it in for them. I let them know on the first day you want to play from here to here. Give them a goal so they know what to work to hold, towards. And by the second or third day, they can complete the piece. Now. Make it strict. Count out loud. Let them know it's not okay to count in your head. Because what we do in Muso is we make the students count out loud all the way up until grade five. And then they can eventually count in their heads. Do you ever get that grade six student who keeps struggling with rhythm when they're grade six and grade seven? It shouldn't be the case. And that's because they weren't counting enough when they were younger. So let's dive straight into the piece. Get your hand on there. One and two and three. Notice how my technique is always curved and I can put some weight on the notes and drive it to the, to the direction I'm going. When you're ready, hands together. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. Body language. Push it. And that's the end of my section A. Things to look out for is that you've got slurs here, right? But you have to remember this composer is from the early Romantic period. So the way you interpret these slurs is different now. Yep, I would go for a more Romantic feel and I'll play legato. You have to know when to take a slur literally and when not to, you see. And that's why if you play some Beethoven pieces like this one, classic G minor, you might notice those slurs. They aren't really slurs. And if you listen to people play on YouTube, you will know that it's meant to be legato. Take a more romantic approach to the work. Great, so always teach a student to do separate hands, even the left hand. One and two and three and one and two and three and one. Now let's say there's a difficult spot where they slip. Let's say bar number five here. One and two and they slip. They can't do it. You can make drilling fun. Circle it. Put a 10 times mark on there and tell them five times slow and five times fast. Do it slow with them. Five times. Watch out for the fingering. And once you're ready, speed it up. Now turn it into a game. And that's when the lessons become really fun. So I've got Sushi Cat over here and I've got Isabel our camera lady, who's going to show us how to make it fun. So grab the soft toy. And I only recommend this for students who are very charismatic and fun. Yep. The ones who are more quiet, you might want to ask them first, just in case they're not comfortable with doing this game. So bring it over. We've got the punishment game. And this little soft cat is going to punish your student if they make a mistake. So what's going to happen is if your student slips or plays uneven, Make it funny. Say whoops. Give me a whoops, Isabel. Whoops. And you can touch that cat on my head. And that's my punishment. And ask them to do it again. Now if they get it, you say yes. Give me a yes, Isabel. Yes. And even give them a high five. Give Woo, me a high five. High five. There yes. we go. Yep. So make it very fun. And you might want to make it more difficult for them. So if they get it three times in a row correctly, the student gets to hit the teacher <gasps> on the head with it. But tell them not to hit it. We call it a pat. Yep, and that's how you get that engagement going during lessons and tell them to do it with their parents at home. Let's give it a try. Ready? One and two and three. <gasps> Whoops! Whoops! Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Let's try again. <gasps> Whoops! Oh, again. <laughs> but now, 
one and two and three. I got it. <gasps> High I five! I still got two more times before yes. I can do it back to my teacher. One and two and Yes, high five! And one more time. One and two and three and yes, I got it! Sorry, Isabel. Ah, <laughs> softly, softly. <laughs> Bang. We got her. All right, so that's the way to practice. Now let's move on to section B. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. Beautiful. Build it up. Strong. Take the notes up. And of course, you can still count with your mouth. One and two and three and 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 one and two and three and one and two and three. And three. Great. Now, how do you teach a slur? Well, you got the off action. Think of a cat's paw. Yeah. Think of how they scratch. Right? And come off the same way. Ask the student to practice the coming off. Make it look beautiful, elegant. Now the first note of a slur is always slightly louder. If they don't understand, apply weight onto the hand so they get it. Help me out here, Isabel. Push it down and now release. Good. Put more weight on the first note. Let them understand. It's heavy and then you release. Tell them to do it five times fast. If they kick, you can make a funny noise. Go, oh, give me a, oh, Isabel. Yeah, that will make them giggle. Yeah, they got it right. Yes, <laughs> that's sure to make them laugh. And eventually they'll get it. One. And that's my tutorial on how to practice a piece that combines technique and the musical aspects together. Thank you.